Hello and welcome back to part 22 of my journey towards my Bachelor's of Science Information Technology degree from Western Governance University. So today's video, I'm going to talk to you all about the last uh, two classes that I've managed to complete, and that is Finite Mathematics, which is class number C277, and Business of IT Project Management, which is class C176. So let's start with finite mathematics, class number C277. This one's worth four credit units. And for me, this was the third and final math class in my degree program. So if you remember back to some of my previous videos, you might remember that math was kind of not my strongest subject. And in all honesty, was kind of the area that I was the most anxious about. And I want to just reassure people that are in a similar mindset that uh, please don't worry, this particular class and even the other math classes, if you watch the videos, are not as bad as you probably think. And uh, they provide you everything you need to WGU with the material to pass this class. So uh, you might surprise yourself. You might find it's actually a little easier and you might know a little more than you think. So that's kind of how I felt. So uh, I would say crack on, don't be worried and, and you're going to be fine. So let's talk about this particular class then and what it entails. So there's 14 areas that it covers. Now in the test, you only get 20 questions and you're gonna get like one or two questions on each of the 14 areas. I'm gonna put that up in the, the video for you now to see. So this kind of gives you an idea. Now what this means is if there's some areas that you're not particularly strong at, so for me that was truth tables, which to this day I still don't fully understand, but because it was only one question, I wasn't that worried because, you know, I was kind of prepared to take the loss on one. And honestly, if it's multiple choice like it is, you know, you still have a one in four chance of somehow guessing correctly. And if you can narrow it down to maybe two uh, possible answers, then you've got a 50 50 shot. So, like I said, I like kind of like the way this is set up. So WGU's material is pretty good. They give you a, a, like a, a lesson plan template. It's a six week plan. Obviously, I was never going to spend six weeks on this particular class, but obviously everybody's different and they kind of break it down for you. Now you can go through the class material like chapter by chapter and learn everything really in depth. But I do not think that is necessary. So let me explain why. So first of all, always take the pre-assessment in these math classes. So, and there's two reasons for it, and I'll explain those now. First of all, the pre-assessment is very similar to the objective assessment. So as always, it doesn't mean it's the same questions, but it's the same type of question. So like I said, it's gonna be broken down into one of those 14 uh, uh, types of math equations. So if you know how to uh, like solve those equations, then you obviously don't need to focus them on those on the material. So the other cool thing about this particular pre-assessment is it changed every time I took it. Uh, not every question, but often it did. Now, honestly, this might be my ignorance, but I'd never really noticed that before. Maybe it's because I didn't take the pre-assessment more than once on too many of the classes. But the fact that it changed every time, it kind of just gave me a fresh practice test, if you like. So I was able to work through. And as I was finding the areas on the coaching report that I needed to work on, I was able to then take pre-assessment again, get a different question on that particular problem and to test to see if I knew how to work it out, if that makes sense. So for those that are good at math and you score very well on your pre-assessment, so I would say if you score 90%, so that might be a little high, but if you get above 90%, I think you can move straight onto the objective assessment. I really do, and I think you're gonna pass. It's that simple. So this could be a quick win for some of you out there that are good at math. For those of you like me that didn't maybe score so well on your first pre-assessment, have to study material, I still don't think it's going to be too bad. Like, so I failed the first pre-assessment. I think I scored maybe half right, 50%, something like that. But it was really good because obviously I could identify the areas that I needed to work on. Now, the material itself, as always, I have different chapters. There's a couple of videos, but not many. But everything is there for you to be able to learn and, start and work out how to solve the different equations. So let's talk about the actual objective assessment itself. Uh, 20 questions, like I said, uh, 90 minutes is what they give you. I would really, really strongly recommend that you have one of these, which is a scientific calculator. Now, in other math classes, I didn't really necessarily needed it to be scientific, but for this particular class, I would. If you can get hold of one, I'd recommend it. And the reason why, there's a number of equations that you can do completely on the calculator uh, with a scientific one that you wouldn't be able to do on a regular calculator. Now, you can obviously break it down and 
manually to get the answers but obviously with that there's a risk that you may get it uh, more likely to get it wrong and also there's a time crunch there as well if you have a scientific calculator you can tap the whole thing out and get the answer straight off the bat so i would definitely recommend that the other thing i definitely recommend to take into the uh, to the um, objective assessment with you of course is your western governors university uh, whiteboard uh, this is really particularly useful in this particular class is because the majority of the questions you're going to get, you might need to write out. There's different puzzles and things like that that you might need to work out. So just writing it down helps you uh, solve the equation. Obviously, you're going to need a couple of pens and uh, a cloth or something to wipe it down. But those two things, um, more than ever, I was using on this particular exam. So overall, not a too bad a class. Uh, I started on the 28th of December and I took the final exam on the 29th. So there's two days. But among those two days, I was off work, so I was able to put quite a lot of study in, so maybe six or seven hours a day, and then with the objective assessment, maybe I got 15 hours into this particular objective, uh, this particular um, uh, class. So I think very doable, quick turnaround, not too bad at all. So next up is Business of IT Project Management, which is class number C176. This particular class is worth four credit units. To pass the class, you have to complete an external certification. So in this particular case, it is the Project Plus exam from CompTIA. So where to start? Well, that's a great question. There's an awful lot of material to cover and a lot of information I can provide you, but clearly I don't want to make this video three hours long. So I'm going to try and make this as quick and as concise as possible for you to help you pass uh, this exam. So the first thing you need to know is this is not a technical uh, class. This is a business type uh, class, which basically means what you're going to learn here is a lot of process, uh, a lot of terminology, a lot of acronyms. Um, simply put, a lot of memorization. There's going to be lists and things to do and, you know, orders and things like that. So really, for me, this is probably the most boring type of class you can possibly take. And obviously, you need to pass this class to get your degree for this particular program. So not great, but it can be done. And let me explain how. So the first thing you need to do, and this actually is good advice for any CompTIA exam, is go out to their website, locate the particular class or exam you're taking and request a copy of the exam objectives. What they'll do is they'll email it to you in a PDF format. Once you have it, I like to print it out. That's what I've got right here. And this particular document is gold. And let me explain to you why. The bottom line is you cannot be tested on anything in the exam that isn't in this document. So what I found in the past is a lot of these companies that provide learning materials for the different certifications, they like to put filler information in. They just give you, they, they ask you questions that aren't even on the exam. I think the reason they do that is they want you to have a full kind of knowledge of the topic. But for this particular case, honestly, I don't care. I just want to know how to pass the exam. So this document is great. What you can do, and this is what I do, is I basically open it up. It's really interesting. They break it down chapter by chapter, and it's really clear. They explain what you need to know. So you can get a pen, you can tick it off. As you say, well, I know that, I know that, I know that, etc. And you can work through the different areas. So for this particular exam, the project plus is broken into four kind of main areas. Um, the other cool thing about the exam, exam objective is at the very back, they always have a glossary with acronyms. So if there's terminology acronyms that you don't particularly know, this will actually tell you what they are, which is really useful instead of you trying to Google it or something like that. So the bottom line is I highly recommend you get the exam objectives, look for it, and that really gives you an idea of what you need to learn to pass the exam. So in full disclosure, I've been in IT quite a long time now and involved in a number of projects over the years. Now I've never been a project manager, but I've always been a team member and had tasks assigned to me as part of those projects. I do have some agile methodology uh, experience, but I would not say I was a scrum master or expert in any way. The good news is there's a lot of material. So I don't think you're going to have to go anywhere else to pass this class. What they provide for you certify it should be enough. So let's talk about that first of all. As always, uh, they kind of break it into lesson chapters. There's 10 in total. Each one of those lesson chapters has flashcards and chapter quizzes. So they're useful. And I actually did work through those. Uh, there's a pre-assessment as always. Uh, there's also two 95 question uh, practice tests. The cool thing is you can take these in uh, lesson mode, which means you can basically learn as you go along each question. Uh, test mode, which is kind of like an exam kind of uh, 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 
type environment, and then a review mode, which basically just gives you the answers. Uh, there's also a prep engine, which is fairly useful. I didn't use it for this class though, which is basically a way to master the different terminology. In total, there's 247 different terms to learn. So that's a lot. Um, there's also a post assessment that they ask you to take before you take the final exam to just to prove that you, you know, you're ready to go. So let me tell you about how I prepared for this exam. So obviously I used some of the material that uh, Western Governor University provided. I used the practice tests. I did the lesson plans, uh, lesson quizzes, and uh, some of the flashcards as well at the end of each chapter. But for the most part, what I did was I made a lot of lists because like I mentioned earlier, this is a process and a business type class. This isn't technical. This is just learning terminology, acronyms, orders. And that's what a lot of what you're going to get on the class, uh, on the actual exams about. So one of the things I did this time, which was I took a kind of note from my daughter's kind of uh, uh, playbook. I went out to the local dollar store, bought myself one of these like trifold boards. I can't know if you can see that. OK, basically printed out some of the lists, uh, some of the key ones I figured would be on the exam. Basically put it on my desk as I was working. And every free moment I had, I was just kind of reading it, rereading it, memorizing. Because the truth is, this is what this class is all about. It's memorization. Another key area that you could use is Quizlet. There's a, there's a whole bunch of different uh, uh, sets out there. I'll put some links in the description for you. Obviously, those 247 items I talked about earlier on the uh, prep engine will be good ones to learn because they're the key ones that you're mostly going to see in the exam. All right, so let's get to the good, good stuff. Let's talk about the exam itself. So it is 90 minutes long. Uh, you get up to 95 questions. Uh, in my case, I was asked 90 which equates to about one question a minute. Uh, it's all multiple choice. Uh, there is no PBQ or simulation or drag and drop type questions that are very common with other CompTIA exams. So that was good. Personally, uh, I didn't think it was too bad. That was my overall assessment of the, uh, of the actual exam. I worked through it f um, fairly quickly. I guess I think I completed all 90 questions in about an hour and 15, so about 15 minutes to spare. I did bookmark about 20 questions I wanted to go back to review. And unfortunately, I did run out of time before I was able to go through all the bookmark questions, which was a bit of a pain. So the time is a factor. So honestly, in my opinion, CompTIA, if you're listening to this, you, you need to give people more time to answer the questions. Now, one minute question you might think is good, but Often the questions are worded uh, confusingly, which is deliberate, obviously, to try and make sure you understand the question. Uh, and often the answers, there's two or three choices or two choices potentially that might be the correct answer. So your candidates really need that little bit extra time. And I really feel like 90 minutes is pushing it. And it seems like every single exam I take from CompTIA, I run out of time. So maybe I'm just a slow learner or a slow test taker. But I would say we needed an extra hour just to be make sure we have the best chance of passing. Um, I guess that's a strategy from CompTIA. Maybe they really are making you try to learn this as fast as you can. Um, I'm not quite sure why, but that might be their strategy. Overall, the questions were written in a more uh, easier to understand format than other exams I've taken from this particular organization, which was good. They were more straight to the point than I've seen previously, so I, you know, that was good. Um, I passed with uh, 741, I think, um, 710 was the pass mark. I honestly felt I'd done a lot better now. I thought I was going to be in the 800, so I was a little surprised when that score came up. So I don't want to tell you, maybe I didn't know as much as I thought I did. But anyway, the pass is a pass, as my wife keeps telling me. End of the day, no one really cares what score you got in the exam cert, as long as you, you, know, you got the cert. So let me finish just by saying thank you to all the subscribers. Numbers are growing. That's fantastic. We're getting lots of activity in the comments section of the videos, which is superb. People are helping each other and just there's lots of uh, um, collaboration there, which is fantastic, which is which is exactly what I wanted. I wanted to build a community so we can all help each other. Uh, for those that sent me messages and I haven't responded yet, I'm really sorry. I'll get you. I promise it's just simply being, as you can imagine, holidays and then studying. I've had my head down. For all those people that have uh, asked or commented about how well I'm doing or what I've got left, those who haven't seen the previous video, hopefully I'll put it up in the screen for you to see now, kind of see where I'm at. As you can tell, I'm kind of getting close. Uh, I've decided that I'm just going to let the chips fall where they are. So what that means is if I do this in one term, I do. And if I don't, I don't. But I'm not going to kill myself trying to get to this end date with 
so many changing classes left. I just think that was the best advice I got. If I have to roll into term two, that's that's fine. It's still, I think, a pretty good achievement to do it that quickly. One final note, uh, there has been a couple of people that sent me messages, uh, kind of almost borderline wanting me to cheat, kind of sketchy type situations. I'm sorry, I'm not going to help you do that. I, it's not worth risking my degree and I certainly don't want to get you in trouble as well. So if I get those kind of emails, I won't respond because like I said, I'm not interested in that. I'm gladly share my notes, I'll gladly help you, but I'm not going to not going to help you cheat. If you know what I mean, <laughs> I hope you understand. So that's all I have for, uh, for this video. Uh, Happy New Year. Let's hope 2021 is a, a better year for everybody. Hope you're keeping safe and I'll talk to you soon.